Hey there developers, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about something that every C Sharp developer should have in their toolbox, and that is Mock. If you've ever struggled to write clean, maintainable unit tests, then this video is for you. We'll walk through an introduction to Mock, we'll talk about what it is, why you should use it, and how to integrate it into your projects. But before we do that, if you haven't done so already, please do like and subscribe to the channel because it helps me bring you lots more great .NET content. So what exactly is Mock? Well, simply put, Mock is a powerful unit testing framework for .NET that allows you to isolate the dependencies of the class that you're testing. It's particularly useful when you're working with interfaces or abstract classes. With Mock, you can create Mock objects that simulate the dependencies that you use in your projects. It simulates the real behavior of these dependencies without having to rely on actual implementations of other classes or external resources like databases. So say for example, you were writing a test for something that relies on iEmail service. iEmail service is an interface that's used for things that send emails. Well, you wouldn't want your unit test to actually send emails, would you? And that's where Mock comes in. So let's jump right into it. So I've got my development environment set up here. I've just created a console application called Intro to Mock. Uh, and my IDE of choice is JetBrains Rider, but obviously if you're using Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, it's just the same. So don't worry about the interface being different. We just want to focus on the code. So first things first, we want to get Mock set up. So we'll need to add the Mock package to the project. So I'm going to open up the NuGet package manager in Rider. Uh, I'm just going to search for Mock. I'm going to select this one, just take the latest and then add that to the project. So once that's been added, we should be ready to start mocking our dependencies. Before we get into creating a sample set of dependencies, I'm gonna add a new project to the solution. And this will be a unit testing project, which will reference this project for testing. So now we have a unit test project using XUnit, and I'm not gonna go into loads of detail about unit testing in particular. Uh, this kind of assumes that you've done some unit testing, particularly with XUnit, uh, so you'd recognize these attributes like fact, for example. So let's just turn our attention back to intro to mock, the actual project itself. And then for this demo, let's say we're working with a product service class that depends on an interface. We'll call it iProduct repository. So the first thing I'm going to do outside of this class, for demo purposes, I'm going to create a new interface. And I'm going to call that iProduct repository. And this interface is going to have a function which returns a product called get product by ID. And that will take a integer parameter for ID. Now, as you can see, we have a little bit of a complaint from Rider saying that product doesn't exist. So underneath this, I'm just going to create a simple class called product. And we'll give that the integer ID that we need as a property. And then we'll just give it a string name property. And so now that fixes this issue up here. Then we're going to create our product service. So this is the service that will be used to access that repository. So we'll create a new class called product service. This is going to have a read only instance of iProduct repository called product repository. And then we'll give this service a constructor and that will take a iProduct repository parameter called product repository. You can see the IntelliSense for Rider is picking up pretty much everything I want to do as well, which means we're probably on the right track. And then as it's suggesting here, we're going to set the product repository to the incoming product repository that's been sent in via this parameter. I'm also going to create another function on this service, which returns a string, and that's going to be called get product name and that will take in an integer of the product ID. So the idea of this is that it will use the incoming ID to find the product that corresponds to that ID and return its name. So the product will be the product that is found. So product repository dot get product by ID, which is enforced by that interface and then the product ID that we passed in. And then we're going to return product.name. Now, if product.name is null, 
because obviously that could happen, then we will just return a hard-coded string called unknown product. So I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see just to recap what we've got is an iProduct repository which enforces that we have a function returning a product called get product by ID. We have a product class, very simple class that just has an ID and a name set of properties. And then we have a product service which has a field iProduct repository passed in through the constructor. And then we have a get product name function returning the string which is the name of the product we've passed in the ID for. So now we're ready to write a unit test and we're going to write a unit test for the get product name method on the product service and we're going to use mock for this to mock an i product repository. So if you think about an entity framework project for example, projects that typically use repository patterns they tend to have an abstraction layer above the database. That's what this product repository would be. We, we don't want to implement a database for our unit testing. We just want to be able to get some sample data and we're gonna use mock for that. So over in our unit test, I'm gonna get rid of this template test and I'm gonna create a new test called get product name and then I'm going to do underscore for the name convention. I'm going to say what it should do. So it should ret so it returns product name and then when product exists. So the idea here is that if the product does exist inside the repository, the actual name we're expecting is returned and the unit test reflects that. So if you remember the three A's of unit testing, that's arrange, act and assert. So first we're going to arrange our data. We're going to create the conditions conducive to actually having a test. So to arrange, we're going to need a mock repository. And this is where we can use some of mock's functionality. So I'm going to create a variable called mock repository. And that is going to be equal to a new mock. Now mock isn't coming up in the IntelliSense. So I'm just going to drop this down and at the top I'm going to reference mock. Now you can see I've made a bit of a, a boo-boo here because mock isn't actually installed on the correct project. I actually installed it on the uh, intro to mock project. So I want to install it on this one. So I'm just going to do that now. Nice little mistake for a demo. Uh, and now you can see we're using mock because the library is installed on the correct project and new mock is available to us. Uh, and mock is mock of t, so we can say the type for the mock, which is going to be the type we want to mock, so i product repository. I said mock a lot of times there, I uh, hope it wasn't too confusing. Uh, so i product repository is also not recognized, so the reason for this is because we don't have a reference to the original product project that we're testing. So I'm going to create a new dependency here, a new reference, I'm just going to do a project reference back to that original project, See if this gives us the import the type. There we go. Using intro to mock. So we're getting somewhere now. We just need to put the parentheses on the end of this. And that should be everything we need for creating the initial mock repository. Although it's not quite everything because we still need to set it up. So we've created an instance of a new mock that mocks iProduct repository, but there is a setup function that we can use to get everything lined up. So underneath, I'm going to reference this mock repository that I've created, and I'm going to call dot setup. And here we can use a Lambda expression to outline how we want mock to behave when a particular part of the object that's being mocked is used. So that was a bit of a, a mouthful there. What I'm basically saying is this is a way that we can say for the object that we've mocked, if I call a function or a method, then I want something specific to happen. I want it to return a specific piece of data. So let me just show you what I mean by this. So because it's a Lambda expression, I'm going to pass in the, the thing that we're referencing. So I'm going to call it repo. And then I'm going to do a Lambda operator. And that will basically be the instance of iProduct repository that we're talking about because we're mocking that type. And so then if I say repo dot get product by ID and pass in a hard coded value, so I'll just say one for now, then we're saying 
I want to declare what is going to happen when I call that function on this I product repository that I'm just calling repo for the purposes of this Lambda expression. So we haven't quite finished there. We've called setup, but then we also chain on some other stuff. So I can also then say returns to govern or to dictate how we return from that function. So we can pass in an object for this. And I want to say that when I call this function, it's going to return a new product. And then I'm also going to set up that product with some values. So the product ID property is equal to one and the name property is equal to, I'll just call it test product. So let's just recap what we've done here. We've created a mock repository. So that's calling the uh, mock functionality on the mock MOQ library. And then we're calling the setup method to say, for this type, when I call the function get product by ID, when it returns, I want to control what it returns. And it's going to specifically return a product with an ID of one and a name of test product. And you could argue that this is pretty much the same as manually creating uh, the repository and then adding something to it um, and then making it so that it's possible to then call that product that you've added and check the values are the same. But I think arguably this is a bit more of an elegant solution. It means that you don't have to do as much manual setup. You can just say mock this type and when you call X return Y. So that's the arrange portion of our AAA arrange act and assert complete. So moving on to the act portion of the AAA, we need a product service and that product service expects that we pass in a product repository. Well, it's in luck because we've just mocked up a new one. So I'm going to say var product service equals new product service. And for this, we can access product repository, but we don't just pass in, uh, sorry, mock repository. We don't just pass in mock repository. We call dot object and that will output the actual mocked object that is part of that mock repository. So now we have our service, which has had the mocked uh, iProduct repository passed in. We know exactly what we're expecting to get when we call get product by ID passing in one. So let's get the result for that then. Let's go var result equals product service dot get product name. That's what we're testing. And then we're passing in one. And then finally, the last A in the triple A is assert. So then we can use X units assert functionality to say assert that the two values are equal, test product and the result. And there we go. And I think that looks a lot better, like I said, than if you were going to manually create all these different values like create the repository create the product add the product to the repository uh, i think it does read a lot nicer it's it's a bit of an opinion obviously and it won't be for everybody but mock is a very widely used um, mocking framework for unit testing and obviously to make this a unit test i'm going to put the fact attribute above this and then I'm just going to run it and straight away we can see it is successful. And obviously if I try to fudge this as well by saying you know, test product five, we expect that that is going to fail. So if I run this again, you can see straight away we've got a failure. So that's a very simple way of mocking an object. I'm just going to verify once again that now that I've corrected that value, our tests are passing again. Yeah, there we go. All sorted. So just to recap on that one, we use the setup method to define how the mock should behave when get product ID, uh, get product by ID is called. We know then that we're going to be passing in value of one, and we know what should be returned when that value is passed in as an argument. Uh, and then we pass the mock object that we've created into that new product service, and then we assert that the result matches the expected value. So let's take this up a notch with some advanced features. So mock lets you verify method calls, it lets you handle out parameters, and it even allows you to throw exceptions. So let's write a test which allows us to check 
that an exception is thrown. So looking at the repository, throwing an exception. So I'm just going to create our test. So we'll call it get product name and we'll say throws exception. And then when uh, it's not when product does not exist, that is a test that we could put in. Uh, but we could also say when repository throws. So this is a bit more of a generic test to say, you know, if there's ever an issue with the repository, then get product name should throw an exception. So we'll start by arranging and we'll do our mock repository again. So we're going to once again create a new mock of type i product repository. And then we're going to do our setup. So like before, we can say mock repository dot setup. And this time we're going to do it the Lambda expression a little bit different. So in the previous example, we wanted to control how uh, repo, sorry, get product by ID worked if we passed in one specifically for the ID. This time it doesn't really matter what the value is that we pass in as long as it's an integer. So we want to make this a bit more generic. So to do this, we can say it and then is any and then type of int. And what this is essentially saying is that we can pass in anything, any value, as long as it's of type integer. And this is good because it keeps things nice and generic. Unlike the previous test where we specifically said, I'm passing in ID one, we want to know that regardless of the number that's passed in for the ID, if an exception scenario happens, that the throw is actually happening. So once we've said, what we're targeting, we're then going to say on what event. And so instead of using returns, we're going to say it throws and it throws a new exception. Inside that exception, we'll put a uh, an error. So I'll just say database error. And so I guess we're kind of simulating the scenario where the, the underlying database that the repository is abstracted above is no longer available. So we're expecting that an exception saying database error would be thrown. So mock repository, we've set it up to say whenever we call get product by ID passing in any integer, then we're expecting it to throw an exception with the message database error. We'll do our act. So we'll do var again product service equals new product service passing in that mock repository with dot object. And then we can assert. So we're expecting that this should throw. We can say assert dot throws the type of just system exception and then that is on product service dot get product name and just so we're doing something a bit different I'm just going to put in uh, 245 and then we'll put the fact attribute to make it a unit test and we will run that and there we go that is also success so obviously this might be a bit too generic a use case but you might have a scenario where you're only allowed to have so many IDs in a database. And so you could say, you know, whenever I call get product by ID and the ID is greater than say 200, if that's your limit, then it's supposed to throw. Uh, and then you can test that that actually throws by passing in 245, which would be above 200. So that's not what I've written here, but that's just another example of a, a use case that you could write exception testing for. So there we go, just a, a very basic intro to mock and some of the things you can do with it. Um, some of these use cases may be a little bit contrived, but obviously I don't have a full-blown application that I've written to test. But let me just run all those unit tests again, just to be absolutely sure. Yeah, we're still passing. So we've basically gone through um, the basics of how to mock something, how we can define how the mock should behave, what should be returned from objects in the mock. Uh, and then we've done a few assertions, and we've also looked at a bit more of an advanced use case where we've checked to see that the mock throws an exception when we're expecting it to. Also looked at is any as a way of generalizing the parameters we pass through to our mock. So there's a lot more that goes into mock and there's a lot, you know, there's a huge amount of features that it has, but I think as an as a initial intro to using it, this should be everything you need to get started. So that is a wrap on our mock tutorial. I hope you found this helpful. Hopefully feeling a bit more confident using mock in your projects and getting started with mocking for unit testing. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more.net tutorials. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover, drop them in the comments below. And until next time, happy coding.